Today we catch, clean, and cook snake gourds. Snake gourds. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I am Papa Pepper and uh, we get a lot of requests um, from people to kind of show how we harvest and use a lot of the food that we grow here. Just had some friends over a little bit earlier and you know a lot of the stuff that people can sometimes see in our garden is stuff that they're not going to find really commonly in the market, in other people's gardens, stuff like that. So what do we got here behind me child? Snake gourds. Snake gourds. So snake gourds are one of our favorites. We definitely like them. You like eating snake gourds? Yeah! Yeah, he does. And um, we cooked some up for Jeff from Bobblehead Homestead. Uh, here's what he had to say. And he got to try some snake gourd today. What'd you think? Yes, I was impressed. And you didn't season it, just some butter. Nope, just some Swiss chard, some uh, butter, some noodle beans, and some snake gourd. And uh, Jeff gives it his seal of approval, but only because he ran out of walruses. Yep. So yeah guys, just fry them in a little bit of butter. Add salt and pepper and stuff if you want, but sometimes I just try to make things as simple as possible and let people enjoy just the basic level because you know, seasonings may become non-essential one day, right? So this one here, what are we doing with this one, kids? Saving it for seeds. So each year we select at least a couple to save for seeds. Check this out. Bugger, you wanna go stand next to that thing? Show me how big that is, son. Yeah, so this is a three-year-old, right? Little buddy Pepper, and you can see how big that one is next to him. Now the one next to that, we're actually gonna cut off, and we're gonna eat, and we're gonna harvest a couple of these, and the cool thing about these is you can harvest them and just kinda let them sit around for days. What's that? A frog, I noticed it. A frog. So if you guys see this, I'm gonna distract quick. Stop, bugger. Um, our sunflowers, the birds have been hitting, and I'm not sure what tipped this over. Maybe it was a squirrel, maybe it was a raccoon. Um, I actually had one like that. See that umbrella shaped one in the middle? I came out and harvested last night one just like that, but there was a bird sitting on top of it, hiding in there, just waiting to wake up and go eat some more seeds for breakfast. But here's where we had a seeding tray top, and apparently a little pickerel frog in our organic pest control posse, thought that would be a good place to chill out and stay hydrated on a nice hot day. And back to the underbrush beneath the figs it goes. Uh, Pinky, why don't you snip off this one? And guys, here's one thing too. Um, let me show you while we're teaching here, hold on. This here is about as fat as these are gonna get. Now I call these snake gourds. Technically they're gonna be the Kikinda competition strain edible gourds from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. We've grown them probably since 2016 and we've loved them. We've been saving our own seeds ever since. But once they get this big, is when they actually start forming the seeds and they go, you know, to seed. When they're still about this size, they're gonna be where you can just, I just shave off the outside, um, wherever they got like bug bites with a carrot peeler, give them a wash and then just cut them up. But down here, we're probably gonna have some seeds forming. Do we wanna save both of these for seeds? Because. You know what, they look so nice dangling together. We're actually gonna save both of those for seeds. I should've saved the one you were growing. We picked <laughs> it, we'll show you guys. But uh, let's go around and get that other one. Yes sir. yes, sir. Oh yeah, can you even do it? Yeah. So this creates quite a presentation. We've only got two of them growing on this side. And two of them, are the only ones that go to the top over here. If we were a smaller family, 
we could eat something like this and just have for vegetable sides. That'd be pretty cool. And I'll do a video soon on these guys. You can see this. If I give it a twist, we're going to uh, get that harvested. There we go. Bugger. What is this guy? It's a noodle bean. A noodle bean. So that's a Chinese red noodle bean, guys. That's another one of our top three garden plants. Look at the size of that. And they crank out an incredible harvest. And you like eating them raw all the time, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's harvest this one down. Can you even do it? But yeah, uh, like I was saying, we only have a couple plants growing here. You can, you can? I think so. Oh, you should have grabbed my scissors. I didn't know where they were. Yeah, that's okay. Look at this thing, though. It creates quite a nice presentation when they're dangling down in the middle of a trellis like this. We should have grabbed... I have much better scissors. There we go. But tall there it is. Him. Oh yeah, it's as tall as him pretty much. But like I said, just with a couple plants, we're already having some nice danglers. And if you look up here, um, you know, here's here's three more. Those could get really huge. You look up over here, oh yeah, there's one hanging out at the top. There's where we snipped that one off. But uh, here's a couple more hiding up in here where you got another one and another one. And another one. There's other ones. I don't know what this guy's doing. I really don't. <laughs> hey, except for hiding squash bugs. You're dead now. But, uh, yeah, that's not what they're supposed to do. We will not save that for seed. So, we'll leave those two for seed. We got this one here. Probably another couple days. And this one here will be ready, which will be nice. Um, there's more noodle beans. This noodle bean actually volunteered over here. It's not even where we're where we're growing them this year. It's just this one plant here, but look at this, guys. You got two here, another one here, two more coming in here, a baby one coming in here, another one coming in here, two more over there. Um, yeah, two more over here. There was just one there, I picked another one. One of those can put out a lot, and that's just one volunteer, so I like to let them grow, because they make a lot of Food. That's just awesome. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. So, let's go down by the sheep pen. Because in a recent video we showed where um, sheep and goats really don't eat um, snake gourds, which is pretty cool. So I uh, actually don't eat really gourd or squash plants unless they really have to, so they'll avoid them. We found that out first with the Ozark nest egg gourds and uh, got to watch them just kind of run in their pasture. And they came to full maturity produce their full uh, gourds and they never really touched them. They had enough pasture so we started growing these snake gourds on the uh, fence line for the sheep too. We did a video on that recently and we're gonna go see what we got growing down there. Ready child? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right let's go. Bugger! Look at that! The whole big long thing guys he's almost gone already. I'm Just done eating my... raw veggies in the garden like a healthy little man right? Did you need another one for when you're done or is that enough for you? Bug. That's enough. That's enough? Okay, then I'm going to eat this one. Oh, did you want another? I'll have one. She'll have another. That's the way to do it, guys. And as a reminder, bees love catnip. This thing is just a buzzing right now, so very cool. Oh, yeah, there's a little honeybee. Bees love catnip. Let it go to seed. Nope. And do we pet bees? No. no, we don't pet them. All right, let's head out to the pasture and get a couple more. Are you going to do the... No, maybe. Just wanted to show you guys that fig there, too. Pretty cool, huh? You want to harvest it? Yes. Okay, you guys get a bonus one. It is how to tell when a what is right. A watermelon. A watermelon. So watermelons come in all shapes and sizes. Well, mostly circles or uh, ovals. ovals. So, uh, but you don't tell based on the size. You tell based on what? Oh, is there a baby one? There. Let me see. Oh, wow, it is so tiny. Guys, this is one of those tiny little prairie lizards. Oh, and he ran away. Oh, there he is. Hey, little guy. So that's part of our organic pest control policy. 
He's up in there right now. Oh, go! We're getting another one, child. Oh! I didn't know there was another I one growing. Yeah, after those ones split with those rains and droughts. Flowers. So this is the one. This is going to be a sugar bush baby. For some reason it's a lot lighter in color than the other ones we have. Yeah. Because the other ones we have are more this color. But for some time Pinky Pepper here has been asking when this thing's gonna be ready, when it's gonna be ready. She grew some of the Benny Kodimas last year. And what do we know about when they're ready, child? Well, the tendril across from them is going to be dry. So, so here's this one. It, it actually hooks up right here. Mm -hmm. And then across from it is a tendril. This tendril right now is completely brown and Maybe dry. And so that means it's ready. You got your scissors? No, I don't know where you put them. Where, oh, did I put them in my pocket? What did I do? Sorry, child, I did. <laughs> so she's going to snip them off here. Oh. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. And hopefully that story's true. Maybe at the end of this video, we'll open that up and uh, see if it's mm. tasty. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Hey, bugger. Do you think you want to eat that little watermelon? Yeah! Yeah, you do? Or should we use it as a soccer ball? No. Wait, we've got a ball and a bat. You guys want to play softball? <laughs> sure. All right, let's, let's go to the sheep pasture. Yeah. That was a yellow one. That's why it didn't look like that sugar bush baby. Is it ready? Is it ready? That's not a real seed. Is it tasty? Yeah. So the other one's gonna be red in the middle. I forgot this was a different kind. And that's one of my downfalls of gardening, guys. I do not label well. We've got a, a mini, Mini one. And guys, this table was actually just gifted to us. We're using it to collect our seeds right now. Um, we're gonna save that for another video because we've gotten a lot of cool presents lately, haven't we, kids? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, this was a good one too because when you're expecting a pink one, red on the inside, and you cut it open, it looks like this, and you're like, oh no, is it even ripe? And then you remember you planted a different variety because who thinks this tastes like a watermelon that's ripe? Me. Me. Oh, yeah. It is very tasty. Yeah! And look at all those seeds. What's that mean we get to do next year? Plant a whole bunch more. Mm-hmm. And next year we'll watch the watering. We'll make sure to give them enough water in the drought time so if we get a heavy rain they don't all explode. Because there was four other ones on this plant. No, that's for Mama and Bell Pepper. <laughs> you ate yours and you ate it down to about nothing. Good job, bugger. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and harvest some snake gourds now, okay? And I don't mean okay. I really don't mean to ask my children if it's okay. I don't ask their permission for things. What I mean is, do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good answer. All right, finish your seed spit and party. And we'll collect these later and then give this table a rinse. But wow, look at that, guys. That is the future right there. And we're excited about the future. There's not even all the seeds from those two species. That's right, that's right. So here we are, down here, where some of our sheep are, and our cow, Xenia. How you doing, girl? Yeah. Hey, Smiley. Unfortunately, when Jacob's sheep are young, their horns are still kind of loose on their head, and one of the big ewes rammed this one the other day, and she lost one of her two main horns. Yeah, that was this one in front, Thunderhoof. Same thing happened to her when she was little, because she ain't got no horns. That grew. That ain't how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to have nice long horns growing. You're a good girl. Yeah, you're so friendly too. Good to see you guys. So anyway, here is where the children planted some snake gourds this year. And we've got a, a number of them growing. we got a couple of them we're going to harvest. Hey Pinky. 
So Pinky, show me what you got there. Oh, this is one that we picked a little while ago that was here. I planted this fence. Red pepper planted that fence, but it looks like they're bottle gourds. Yeah, there's some bottle gourds and other ones mixed so, in here. Yeah, and then sweet helper pepper, and, help me plant. And there's those like nest egg gourds in the ground there, but you can see, here they are. Oh, that one's dancing. Uh, so the sheep are here, they're doing their thing, and yet they're not eating these guys. So here's one we can snip off, child. And for some reason this guy's getting fat when it's still pretty short. I'm not completely sure what's up with that. You snip it off and pull it up, or give it to Bugger. Oh yeah, that looks more like just a, a long skinny zucchini or something. Yeah, or a big fat cucumber. And then there's one over here. Yeah, another There's one. So yeah, get that big guy there. It looks like an umbrella. Oh yeah. Why? Cute little one. And I gotta watch squash bugs with these guys. So I squash them squash bugs. Oh my, this is hard to cut. Through. You almost got it. Another one coming in over there. All right, bugger. Show me yeah. the other one. Where's the little guy? There's Where's the little guy hanging? There. Where's the little guy who's hanging, son? Right here. That's right, right there. Let's see, what do you got? Another one like that. And then look at this right here. These guys are obviously going to be shorter and stouter. I can just tell from the way they're growing at this age. But look at that. There's a big one there too. That one, kids, I say we're going to save for seed. Okay. Just because it is so big already. But uh, there's going to be some longer ones on this side too. Just like the one red pepper, or sorry, pinky pepper harvested. You got that one there. And then you can see like another three of them up here and who knows what else is going and I'll have somebody come down and do a squash bug patrol soon. The squash bugs and then these little cucumber beetles. Yeah, they're flying away. They know it's war if I show up. They seem to be threats against them. This will be another stout one. Yeah. But let's get to the part where we show you how we cut these things up and eat them, right? Yes! Bunch of sticks. Show daddy your, your thing, ladies. Yeah, look at the size of that. Oh, baby, are you going to eat that whole thing? Yeah, you are. <laughs> she's helping. Oh, yeah, she's a big helper. And yeah, we'll do a cow update soon? Yes. Yes, we will. That's our bottle, baby. She's doing good. And uh, her mom was delicious. She didn't work out for us for a milk cow, so she turned into a meat cow. <laughs> That's right. We get milk and milk That's why they're dual purpose. That's right, dual purpose. <laughs> oh baby, oh baby! On this side of the camera, it's actually been a couple days. I know over there, it's just the next clip in the video. But I wanted to show you guys, look at this thing growing now. It's definitely on the ground. It's getting a little bigger every day. That thing is massive. And what I wanted to do was just come out here and grab one. Wow, look at that guy now. Look at that guy now. Look at these guys now. Wow, there's a lot of them coming in over there. You can't really see that. Look at that snake gourd, right? Another one there, another one here. Wow. But this guy is actually about the perfect size for picking for me. And there's a number of reasons, and I'll do a comparison of why this guy is the perfect size and why those other ones, some of them, are a little too big. Let's see. Nice long one. And then, I did do a video last year, I think, where I stir-fried all three of my top garden plants. Um, I'm just gonna grab some Malabar spinach quick and some noodle beans, because they're coming in like daily. And this is like a day after that video where I was talking about succession sowing with the uh, noodle beans, and I was gonna wait two days, I'm picking them already, because they're crazy. So I'm gonna get some of those, and I'll show you guys that in this video too, for people who missed the one last year, or who are just wondering, or for newer people. So, grabbed up some of those noodle beans, and that's crazy because a lot of the plants are just getting started producing. Look at some of these Malabar leaves. Again, I'm not bragging, showing, oh look, I'm amazing, I grew Malabar leaves this big. Just showing it up. They, uh, they came back themselves. I didn't do anything for that, so. Yeah, just a good size. Right, girls? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to cut these up, okay? And look at the one that you saved, child. 
I have a feeling that that's even bigger than the one from last year. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Is there some way we can lift it off the ground so it can grow longer? I moved it to the side. But look at these guys too. There's so many of them coming in here. We'll have to have some friends over soon to uh, bless with some of them too, huh? Yeah. So I actually tried filming this part a number of times but had a lot of camera malfunctions. We're going to see if we can't get through it now so I can finish this video for you guys. We'll see. So with the snake gourds, when you get one that's big enough, and this one I think is big enough, a couple things you can feel is that the skin gets kind of tough. And then on the inside, the seeds are going to start forming. If you time them right, you should be able to get one where it's all the way through, it's gonna be solid and the skin is still soft. Now here, the bugs have really been eating on this one. So some things like the cucumber beetles have been nibbling on that. That's not that big of a deal. And all I do to solve that problem is I take like a carrot peeler. This one's shaped like a monkey. We're just gonna use that to peel any places the bugs have eaten. This year, or maybe next, I also want to try using a, a peeler like this to actually make like some noodles out of the snake gourds, either for a lasagna or a pasta or something like that. So when they're young enough and soft enough, the skin is just fine to eat. The problem is I don't want the parts the bugs were nibbling on, so that's what I'm taking off here. Just anywhere they nibbled gets removed. And then we just chop the end off where the stem is and the blossom end. Now, from about here up, you're gonna see it's pretty solid. Okay, there's really no seeds forming, skin soft. This, you can use the whole thing. And to chop that, all I do is I have a manageable size, something that'll fit on my cutting board. I like to cut them lengthwise once. You can see again here, there's not a lot going on. Really nothing forming, so you can eat that whole thing. And then I run them lengthwise again, pretty much quartering it from end to end. Then when I put it back together and chop, each little slice like that gives me four pieces. And that's the end product for this. I've still got to rinse them off, but this is what we'll add to our soups, add to our stir fries. We'll freeze them just like this and they work well. And recently a friend gave us a new idea that he tried because he's growing these for his first uh, time ever. And I'm going to cover that in an upcoming video. Now as you grow snake gourds, a couple things you're going to learn is you're going to learn kind of what width a lot of times they're going to be at to be um, kind of solid all the way through where the seeds haven't formed yet. And you're also going to be able to touch them. You know, this one's a bit wider but it's soft skin. This one's a bit um, thinner, but it's hard skin. So this one, I've got to peel the whole thing. If you catch them at the right time, all you're really gonna have for waste is this. The little blossom end and the stem end and anything you might have shaved off. And if you didn't get bit by a lot of bugs, this is about all the waste. And that can still be used as chicken feed or uh, you know, added to the compost. And you're not gonna waste it, but it's what you're not eating. If you get one that you waited till the skin got tough, you're gonna have to do the whole thing. So this one's a little bent. I'm gonna grab a straighter section out of the bigger end here. Oh yeah, you see how much tougher that is to cut through? And then when you open it up, you can see that those seeds were forming. This is sad. The reason that I find that to be sad is number one, there's a lot more just waste, a lot more that you're not gonna eat, but two, as all those seeds were close to being developed. 
This is one of those that in hindsight, like shortly after we picked it, I decided, you know, we should have left that and saved that for seeds. It was so big already anyway. It was forming them. It was close. We could have given up on the food for that one from this year and had the food for the future in the, force, uh, in the form of seeds. Now I've got to peel the whole thing, which is a lot tougher than this, that soft skin one where the bugs had bitten. So now that it's peeled, when I cut it in half, you're gonna see all that going on, which now means we gotta scoop out the middle with a spoon too. Oh yeah, even as you scrape off the inside, you can see so many more of those across there. Those seeds are not um, fully developed. They're not viable um, the way I see it. I don't try to save those and plant those. Perhaps they are fully developed enough that they could be, but I know for sure when the plant gets dry that then you've got some good seeds for the next year. These still look undeveloped to me. These are not the ones we keep, not the ones we save, not the ones we plant, not the ones we sell. I don't know the way, and I don't even know if there is a way, to both eat it and have the seeds and to me when you're coring it and you're generating all this extra waste and these tiny little U's are going to be you know the food you get rather than all the way across there completely full it's more effort for less food so once you start learning more about these once you start growing them keeping an eye on them and learning the different things you can get a lot more food for a lot less effort have a lot less waste and the other ones you can grow a lot more seeds just because anyone that get past their prime you can grow and what you'll find is it's probably going to be a lot more seeds than you personally need and that's when you're able to bless others um either trade them give them away sell them one way or another get them in the hands of other gardeners introduce them to this amazing food and as i mentioned earlier it's a lot more versatile than i originally knew and i'll cover that in an upcoming video because of uh, an experiment a friend of ours did so I'm looking forward to that. I'll get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna add some noodle beans and some Malabar spinach to this and I'll show you how we do that real quick. This one here is another one of my top three garden plants. It's the Red Stem Malabar spinach. These guys are crazy. If you check it out, they make a nice thick leaf. They're very big. Uh, I didn't plant any this year, didn't plant any last year. Got tons and tons and tons because it just reseeds itself and comes back on its own. The best way I know to have good greens all summer long. A lot of other plants give up, they bolt, they wither, they fade away. This stuff thrives all summer long. So when I pick it, I pick it in a stack like this and just stack up all the leaves. I'll rinse it in the kitchen later. I put that stack down and if I just cut it about, yeah, somewhere between a half inch and an inch in lines all the way through and then give that a rotation and cut it the other way, I wind up with all these tiny little squares. And something like this is easy to add into a salad, into a soup, into a stir fry, uh, put it on top of your tacos, whatever. So that's how I add in the Malabar spinach. I'll just put that on top. And then the Chinese red noodle beans, another one of my top three garden plants. They grow amazing. This is one day's worth of harvest, which is crazy. The other Friday we picked 120. I'm not sure how many this is, but I will say it's a lot. What I like to do is line them up so all the stems uh, add up at the same spot. You can see that there, how they're all at the same spot. Then I just slice that part off, and again, I'm just going every inch to half inch all the way down the beans. By having them bundled like that, what I wind up with is every chop then gives me 10 or a dozen or whatever it may be. And the finished product looks something like that. So again, add this to a stir fry, add this to a salad, add this to a soup, you know, do something like that with it or we freeze them this way too. And we also pickle them that way. Add that in, not only do you have some different nutrition, you've got a different color in there. Spices up the presentation a little bit with the purple. And some of these I'm gonna save for pickling, so I'm not gonna work my way through the whole thing. I'm just gonna snip the end of them, add this in, and then get to the kitchen. 
So here I just heat up some oil or butter in a skillet and I'll just grab some of that. We've chopped up, cleaned. And uh, this can be a good like vegetable to have on the side or um, you can add some meat or something like that or add a little bit more and just have it as a main entree too. So rather versatile for some rather simple stuff. Sometimes like when we met up with Jeff I didn't even uh, season it at all. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of garlic salt and you can add other things into it too like some uh, bell peppers or some onions or something like that besides meat. But. I'm going to add just a little bit of garlic salt, a little pepper, and probably run it from there. But you'll see it change a little bit of color as it cooks. Sometimes I'll do a lower heat and keep it covered, but you're pretty much just getting this cooked like you would a normal stir fry. So now I'm just stirring at medium heat and keeping it covered in between stirs to help it cook all the way through. So here it is all cooked up. I just killed the heat. I just did it on medium heat, maybe 10 minutes-ish, and it looks good. It smells amazing. Uh, I kept most of the Malabar spinach and noodle beans that I cut up in here because I was just making some bags of snake gourd for the freezer. And these ones here, we've had a good success rate just cutting them up like that and freezing them and then pulling them out in winter. And uh, it's one of the ways that we like to do it. So here is the finished product, but we gotta get a taste test. Who can taste test? I can. What's in there? Do you know what even is in there? Yeah. What? Tell me something. It's, it's beans and salad and, and a snake gourd. Beans, salad, and snake gourd, yeah. So Chinese red noodle beans. Yeah. We've got Malabar spinach for the salad. Yeah. <laughs> and then snake gourd. Is it hot? Yeah. Sorry. Is it good? Yeah. You swallowed that hole, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, take one, blow on it a little bit, and then nibble on it. So, Pinky Pepper, a little more experience with a fork. <laughs> How is it? Does it taste just like Mama used to make? Yeah, tastes pretty good. And how often do we eat snake gourds? A lot. A lot, and pretty much all year round, right? Because they provide really well for our family. Mmm. Yeah, that is tasty. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Uh, these are actually three of our top garden plants, the snake gourds. One of them, for sure. We love how much food they can provide for our family. They've been in our garden for years, and we'll have them for years to come. And uh, we are growing more for seed right now, so when those get all done and ready, those will be listed in our shop too. Um, yeah, we'll have more. And hey, if you guys have ordered from our shop and anything shows up subpar, please let me know. I recently got contacted from somebody in Minnesota, said they ordered some stuff, and their envelope showed up ripped up and missing seeds and stuff like that. So I resent it, but please, if you've got a problem like that, let us know. And we will do the best we can, as quickly as we can, to fix those issues for you, right? Yeah. And she's even been autographing books lately, haven't you? Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Papa out. Mm -hmm.